up, everybody? Welcome to the Jamie D Show, Woo! live on KSHP AM fourteen hundred and one oh seven point one FM every Monday through Friday from ten AM until eleven AM PST, and live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at the Jamie D Show, a real live morning radio show, and now live from twelve PM until one PM CST in Chicago, Illinois. What's up, everybody? Welcome to everybody who's tuning in their cars right now. I truly appreciate you all for supporting the Jimmy D Show. For those who are actually tuning in on the many different live and streaming platforms like Instagram, YouTube, and more, what's up, y'all? I appreciate y'all. All right, so for today's show rundown, I'm going to get into the daily news, and then we're going to have a conversation on should you own a pet? Yes, that is a very trending topic right now because there's a lot of conversations going around about should you own a pet, should you not? Is it good for your health? Is it not? And we're going to get into that later on in the show. So make sure you guys stick around. I see we have I am Diamond Fox, Jay Poppy. We have Jessica as well. Kara, what's up? Good to have y'all here. It's an absolute pleasure. All right. As written by Hollywood Unlocked, shocking footage shows a home in Arlington, Virginia, exploding as pe police were searching for a man who reportedly fired a flare gun from inside the home on Monday night, according to NBC News. Neighbors reported that they heard possible gunshots, but later authorities determined that it was a flare gun that was fired. Later on that night, around 8 p.m., officers were trying to conduct a search warrant at the home, and that's when the suspect inside the residence discharged several rounds. Arlington County Police Spokesman Ashley Savage told reporters, quote, the house subsequently exploded, end quote. She said officials were not able to go into the home and confirm if there were any deaths. But according to the report, the suspect was inside at the time of the explosion. Quote, at this point, we're only aware of one individual who was inside the home. And quote, Savage said, quote, the identity of the person was involved. The, the identity of the person involved in the case was not released. The circumstances of the explosion are still under investigation. That's what Savage said. Let's go ahead and take a listen to how this explosion sounded. Oh, talk about insane. If you guys have not been on social media lately, you probably have missed this video, but it was a real live explosion. I feel as though that a lot of us are not affected by things we see on social media now because we just see everything, whether that is a car explosion, whether that's a house explosion, whether that's somebody getting ran over or killed. It's insane. I was on Twitter two nights ago and for, listen, Twitter, <laughs> Twitter is not a real space. Because I get on Twitter and it's like anything and everything goes. And I don't follow any of these accounts or any of the content that I see on my Twitter. But Twitter has a following tab and for you tab. And on that for you tab is where you see what other people are liking, what other people are commenting on, and who Twitter thinks you should look at and follow or pay attention to. And I'm not going to lie because I don't really go on Twitter like that whenever I do. I just look at what I'm automatically on. And apparently it takes you straight to the For You page versus taking it to the tab where you're looking at the people you actually follow. And I saw about three videos. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all, I'm so nosy. I'm so nosy. I saw three videos of people killing themselves. One, I saw a guy shoot himself in the head because his girlfriend broke up with him. Another one I saw of a girl who was playing around with a gun next to her friend and then let off a shot and hit him straight in the head on accident. And then there was another video I saw of a guy getting killed. It, uh, it, Twitter is not a real place. But things like that over and over and over desensitizes you to the things that actually happen in life. And so when I saw this explosion, I was shocked because it's like you don't really see that much imagery of houses exploding. But it was also kind of just like, mm, this is normal. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like, it's not like a laughing moment, but it's like, it's like an awkward laugh. Like, that's weird, right? And then on top of that, too, I, since I've never really seen that much examples of housing, houses exploding, I always thought if, like, one house exploded, like, the other houses next to it would explode, too. But I'm surprised that, like, that explosion was contained to that one house. I don't know. It, it's just weird. I, and also, I don't know how they make an entire house explode. Like, if you guys didn't see the video, it's not like a it's an explosion where, like, the wall came off. No, the whole house collapsed. <laughs> Insane. 
insane. All right, the Jasmine Brand reported that New York State has passed Bill S6528A, which will require all cosmetology students to learn textured hair, no matter their race or desired area of expertise. Students must now pass natural hair curriculum to receive their cosmetology license. The law was first introduced in April of 2023 by Senator Jamal T. Bailey. Quote, this bill would require cosmetologists and natural hairstylists to pursuant to regulations. Pro, pro, oh, my gosh, I really literally looked this word up before I even got here. Promulgated by the secretary of state, complete certain training, as well as include questions on license examinations regarding the provision of services to individuals with all hair types, including but not limited to various curl and wave patterns, hair strand thickness and volumes of hair as a condition of licensure. The bill reads, OK, first of all, I am 100 percent with this bill. I believe that representation in all workplaces and in all spaces of media matters. And too often are we as people of color, not just black people, but people of color and people with textured hair and different types of hair find it very challenging to find people to service us the correct way. And a lot of times we have to settle, especially living in areas whew, that don't have a lot of people that look like us doing what we need to our hair. It, it, it's, it's, it's hard to find a person that really knows how to service you the correct way. And I know a lot of people can attest to this. When you find that one person, you never want to let them go, period. Hey, shout out to the Zactivist. I see you. It's a pleasure to have you guys here on my live morning radio show. But yeah, once you find that person who is doing the right thing by you, especially when it comes to giving you a service, you don't want to let that person go. And I'm super appreciative that we are now having people in power who are pushing for representation in all spaces. I'm so here for this bill, and I believe this bill should be passed in all cities. That's just my opinion. All right, my heart is broken, period, after reading and watching this post by The Shade Room. And the reason I say period is because there's no other emotion that I felt after uh, reading this horrible news and seeing this video. According to TMZ underscore, underscore TV, a white police officer in Reform, Alabama, was suspended after using a stun gun on a black man while he was handcuffed. The incident occurred Saturday during a traffic stop. A man identified via viral Facebook post as Micah was arrested for allegedly trafficking fentanyl. The un unidentified officer cursed at Micah several times throughout the arrest. She then utilized a stun gun on him. This instantly brought him to tears. She then asks him, Quote, do you want it again? End quote. The police department was made aware of the video after it caused much backlash. In a statement, the Reform Police Chief Richard Black and the mayor of Reform, Alabama Melody Davis, said, quote, the department is in the process of turning over all materials related to the, the arrest to the Alabama State Bureau of Investigation and has requested a thorough investigation into the circumstances surrounding the arrest. In accordance with city policy, the officer involved has been placed on administrative leave while the investigation is conducted. End quote. I want you all to take a listen to this audio clip. Let me know if it broke your heart just like it broke mine. Stand up. Right there on the front of the car. <laughs> Hey, I don't got, I ain't doing it, bro. I got good right there. I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm saying, what you saying? Oh, yeah, fuck. I'm not, oh, my God. Stop. Okay, 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 I'm down, down. Oh, my fuck. Oh, my God. 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 You want it again? No, man. Shut the fuck up. You was big and bad. Shut your oh. ass up. <sighs> I, I'm telling y'all, even just right now, hearing that again made me want to cry. And for me, I'm a sap. I don't like seeing anybody cry. I don't like seeing anybody hurt. I don't like seeing anybody sad. And I don't know why, but it, it's one thing to see, you know, people my age cry, but it's another thing to see older adults cry and young kids. And for some reason, I, I, I'm sensitive to anybody crying, but when I see black men crying, uh, that 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 really really hurts me to know that this lady was so 
power strung that she wanted to go out of her way to cause harm to this man. This man was at, at no point in this video, at least not complying. At no point was he not being a menace. At no point was he being a problem. Again, I'm only going off of this video. I'm only going off of what we heard and what we see in this video. If there's anything else that comes out after this, then I'll recant my statement. But as of right now, we did not see this man struggling to get out of her grasp. We did not see this man fighting back with this police officer. We didn't even hear this man talking back. But she felt so inclined to stun gun somebody because he said he had a gun in his pocket. And he, he was like, why are you saying, oh, yeah, like, why are you getting so happy? You got so happy to find that he had a gun on this person. What, like, what is wrong with people? I don't understand why people like this are in power, how they get these jobs. And I don't understand why we're not in a place now where we don't have mental health days because we are human. And I can guarantee you that there are some amazing people in the police force right now and they have their days and they may find themselves in spaces like this on accident. But there are times when we should be able to say, hey, not today. Hey, I, I can't come to work today. Hey, I'm not feeling it. My girlfriend broke up with me. My boyfriend broke up with me. I, I sprained my ankle. Something bad happened and I'm just not feeling it today. Or I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm not going to be able to perform the correct way today. It just truly saddens me seeing that there are so many people abusing their power. She already had that man handcuffed. She already had that man on the hood of her car. She was also already being abusive with her words. She was being weird, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, first of all, she should have just been suspended for that. But then she also stun gunned this man for absolutely no reason. I believe that she needs to be fired and never allowed to hold a police badge ever again. And y'all might be like, well, he had fentanyl on him. He had a gun on him. Okay, well, do the arrest. The person's still human. I'm not disregarding the fact that he shouldn't be selling fentanyl. He shouldn't have fentanyl on this person. Maybe he shouldn't have had a gun. But you still do not treat people less than, especially if this person was not complying. And even if the person was not complying, there should be so many other things you should do before you decide to hurt somebody. Hearing that man cry like a complete baby was so upsetting and so saddening. I hope this man gets justice and I hope he also learned his lesson. Hey, don't be selling fat and all. Don't be having drugs on your person. We got, we got, we listen, we, two sides of the corner are true. We got to do better as a community and police officers need to do better as well. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick, laugh. we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> now I've got stuck. This is the Jamie D show live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 AM until 11 AM PST and live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at the Jamie D show. And live in Chicago, Illinois, right now from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. CST. Don't go nowhere. Stick around. Is your dog suffering from a sensitive stomach? Hi, it's Kelly the Cookie Lady from Mooch's Munchies. Our dogs had super sensitive tummies and I needed to find a low fat treat that wouldn't give them gas or other issues. Most of the treats on the market were loaded with fillers, chemicals, and chicken fat. Many of them weren't even food. Well, I knew I could do better, so I developed Mooch's Munchies and I'm happy to be able to share them with you. Stop by our store or our website, moochesmunchies.com and find out why we say that Mooch's Munchies are totally possum. Zen World Premium CBD offers full and broad spectrum CBD oil, extracts, and capsules, which are designed to help you feel your best. Their products are sourced from the best organic hemp and natural ingredients on the market and are tested for quality, purity, and potency. They have a full range of items from health and wellness to beauty to pets. Call 725-205-9223. Visit online at zinworld.com or stop by their location at 9895 South Maryland Parkway and Silverado Ranch Parkway. Mention KSHP for 10% off in-store or use code KSHP online for 15% off. Hungry for the best barbecue in Las Vegas? Come out to the infamous barbecue and meat market, John Moles Meats and Roadkill Grill in Las Vegas. John Moles was featured on the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Now take home delicious meat selections for your grill, and while you're there, grab a bite of the best barbecue in Las Vegas. With two locations now at Tom and Gowan or on North Decatur, you're sure to find the perfect meats for your next barbecue or party. Find us online at johnmolemeats.com.
What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Jamie D Show. Woo! Live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST. And live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at the Jamie D Show, a real live morning radio show. And now live in Chicago, Illinois from 12 p.m. until 1 p.m. CST. Woo! All right, for those who are just now tuning in, we're going over some daily news. Now let's get into this because we're, we're all, it's just so much going on in the world. Now this story, <laughs> when I tell you, I was like, <laughs> as written by Mashable, more UK porn consumers visit adult sites in the morning and afternoon hours, aka during the workday, than any other time, UK communications regulator Ofcom reports. And its latest online national study into the digital lives of people living in the UK, which dropped, UK reveals, off form revealed that this and other findings about people's porn use is apparent. While in May of 2023, when this data was collected, more UK adult visitors went to services for porn content during the workday. And they spent the most of their time on these sites between midnight and 8.59 a.m. <laughs> now, I don't know when y'all got work, but I don't have work between midnight <laughs> and, and almost 9 o'clock in the morning. That's not really a work day to me. I don't know what they're doing over there in the UK. <laughs> but hey, the average visit per user in the nighttime hours was about 59 minutes compared to the 55 minutes during mornings and afternoons. Ofcom found that UK adult internet users spend an average of three hours and 41 minutes online per day in general that month. It's clear that from a chunk of these users, porn viewing, whether in video, image, or text forms, is a part of their internet routine. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. This has me in shambles because, hey, get it how you live. It, 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 that's what you're into. That's what you're into. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it, it's a natural part of life. But I also understand that porn addiction is real. I understand that porn can truly negatively impact people's brains and that porn has, contrary to a lot of people's belief, had a lot of negative impacts on our society. And those impacts could be how they view sex, how they view their partner should be involved with them during sex how they view their partner she look, how, their view, how, how they view how often they should be having sex. And also it just deters people's mind from being able to concentrate and truly focus on everyday tasks. Because a lot of times when you are addicted to porn or you watch porn too much, even if there's not an addiction, but you watch it a little too much, you could become very sex attracted. And what I mean by that is your brain is always thinking of sex. And while again, it's a natural part of life, can also be a very negative part of life that can be very negatively consuming. And even though I'm laughing at this report, I mean, <laughs> it's sad that, you know, there are some people out there who can't control their urges. And watching too much porn and involving yourself in too much sex can cause you to have way too many negative urges. And a lot of times those urges can consume how you think, how you move throughout the day, and how you interact with other people, as well as how you see other people. So I can understand how this could be a very bad situation, but too much of a good thing is always bad, you know? And when you're looking at situations like this, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I've said some stuff to my friends, like, oh my God, look what I just saw on Twitter. Or like, oh my gosh, look who's like tape just got released like during the day. But I usually put like, hey, if you're around somebody or if you're not in a space where you can watch this, don't watch this. <laughs> or NSFW, <laughs> not safe for work. <laughs> Woo, but y'all out here like watching it, doing work hours. Now, again, that's a problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why y'all out there watching porn while you at work? Okay, this has to be a work from home thing because if y'all are in these people's office, <laughs> y'all are in these people's offices watching porn. Something's wrong with y'all. All right. According to the Shade Room, a man who killed his pregnant girlfriend and dumped her body on the side of an expressway has been sentenced to 25 years to life in prison, according to the New York Post. 
Gooey Charles, 33, received the maximum sentence for his heinous actions, being found guilty for the second-degree murder of Vanessa Pierre. The incident occurred back in October of 2020 when Charles was seen on video dragging Pierre's lifeless body out of her car and on the side of the Horace Harding Expressway. Surveillance footage captured the 29-year-old woman alive in the passenger seat just an hour earlier. Her body was discovered later that day by an MTA bus driver with gray sweatpants wrapped around her neck per the district attorney's office. An autopsy revealed she died from asphyxia stemming from compression of the neck. Pierre was six months pregnant with the suspect's daughter who had, who would have been named Libby Egypt. Her sister told, her sister told the outlet that she warned Vanessa previously about Charles. Quote, I kept telling her this man is not it. End quote. She said, quote, something was just off about him. He was a pathological liar, end quote. <sighs> These situations really hurt because you never know who you're dating. You ne Listen, you never even know who is in your family for real, for real. It, it, it sucks that humans are going to human. It sucks that the people you think you can trust, people you think that love you, the people that you think have your back are some of the ones who hurt you the most. And some of the ones you have to look out for the most. It's sad. It's it's insane. And my condolences go out to her family, to her. You know, may she rest in peace. She did not deserve to be strangled to death. She not whatever happened. I don't care if she cheated. I don't care if she lied. Even though I'm sure she didn't. I, I wasn't there. I don't know them. But uh, nobody deserves to die unless. Hear me out. They killed somebody else. Then we can have conversations about what should be their penalty. Is death penalty a thing? But if you did nothing to somebody, nobody deserves to die. I don't, I don't wish, and, and I'm not contradicting myself. I said we could talk about these things, so hear me out. I do not condone violence, and I do not wish death on other people. But again, if this person is a killer, and they did it with no remorse, then we should be able to have conversations on should the death penalty be present? Should this person spend life in jail? Should this person remove, be, be removed from all freedom? These are conversations that we should have when we are faced with a killer who killed somebody on purpose, who planned to kill somebody on purpose, who had absolutely no remorse for killing the person that they killed on purpose. I'm going to make that known so y'all don't drag me through the mud. <laughs> All right, Ball Alert wrote on Instagram that the Aurora police officer who was acquitted of his role in Elijah McClain's 2019 murder has gotten his job back with back pay. The city confirmed that Nathan Waryard returned to the police force on restricted duty. Waryard had been on unpaid administrative leave since September of 2021, two years after he stopped McClain on August 24th, 2019, following a 911 call about a suspicious man walking in the night. McLean was not armed, nor did he pose a threat to anyone. Yet, Woodyard unnecessarily tackled McLean, who was ultimately injected with ketamine, which sent him into cardiac arrest. Woodyard was charged with reckless manslaughter and criminally neglected, neglected homicide. He was found not guilty of both. Negligent, excuse me. Quote, consistent with the requirements set forth in the War Cincy Charter, Nathan Woodyard is no longer suspended without pay following his acquittal on November 6th. End quote. Aurora spokesperson Ryan Luby confirmed in an email to Nine News. Quote, the length of reintegration period varies depending on the employee, the length of their extended absence, and any other circumstances that may arise before or during that process. End quote. Luby wrote. Quote, consequently, Mr. Woodyard would, not, would need to undergo reintegration for a period of time as numerous policies and practices at the Aurora Police Department have changed since he was placed on administrative leave without pay, end quote. As if that is not shocking enough, Woodyard will receive back pay in the amount of $212,546. Wow, $12, $12,546.04. <laughs> For the months he was out of work. So this man was uh, put on administrative leave without pay and got paid anyway and still got his job back. Talk about insane. Talk about insane. Again, $212,000, $500,000, dollars That's crazy. 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 
just shows how they feel about us as people. Unfortunately, again, I, I do my best not to be a show that's always about race or race baiting or anything about that. But it, it just goes to show that people really don't see black people as human. They gave this man his job back and pretty much, pay, not pretty much, and then paid him for the time he was out of work. Why I say he was on administrative leave if we're going to pay him? It's, it's insane. All right, y'all, we're going to go take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have a conversation on own a pet. Yes, we're talking about it. Some fun, some light, some exciting. Should you own a pet? Don't go anywhere. This conversation is going to be fun. It's going to be fresh. Stick around. This is the Jamie D Show live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST in Las Vegas, Nevada, and now 12 p.m. until 1 p.m. CST in Chicago, Illinois. Don't go anywhere, guys. This is a real live morning radio show. Stay tuned. AR Heating and Air Conditioning, our main goal is to provide high quality service without breaking the bank. From maintaining your HVAC units to fixing them when they are down, they are there for you. AR Heating and Air Conditioning offer reasonable prices, reliability, and professional service at a great value. For more information, go to fixmyac.net or call 702-646-4000. Beat the heat and call AR Heating and Air Conditioning today. Welcome to Hash House A Go Go, where we've been serving farm food and crafted cocktails for over two decades. Visit us for the full Hash House experience at any of our five Las Vegas locations. Hash House A Go Go is where old school meets new and gets twisted. We bring people together over good food and fun. Come in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and come hungry because our portions are huge. Visit us online to see our entire menu at hashhouseagogo.com. Hash House A Go Go. It's a Midwest thing, and there's nothing else like it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Jamie D Show. Woo! Live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST in Las Vegas, Nevada. And now 12 p.m. until 1 p.m. CST in Chicago, Illinois. And also live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at The Jamie D Show, a real live morning radio show. Welcome in, everybody. For those who are tuning into their cars right now, I appreciate you all for being a loyal listener to the Jamie D Show. For those who are on the streaming platform, I appreciate y'all, and I love y'all. Hey, shout out to everybody who's watching right now. They call me P. I see you. Yes, we got Iris. We got Kara. Welcome in, y'all. It's an absolute pleasure. For those who are just now joining us, I already went over some daily news, and now we're having a conversation on should you own a pet? Yes, let's talk about it. <laughs> Y'all, I want to have this conversation because I don't want to keep it light and fresh today. Today is Taco Tuesday. What's up, Gina Chandler? How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have people from all over the world listening to the Jamie D Show, and I truly, truly appreciate you all. All right. So I said this several times, and I truly mean it. If you aren't hurting yourself, others, or animals, I do not care what you do. I just don't. I, I, I don't care what you do. I live by that. And that's because we are all so invested in other people's business, and that is insane to me. The amount of people I see so upset, concerned, or bothered at what the next person has going on baffles me. Yeah, if I'm on social media and I see something happening, I may judge, I may cringe, I may even have a thought about it, or whatever it is that I'm watching. But unless it actually affects me, I don't care. And I let whatever it is I was feeling go. And that's truthful, I'm a human. Let's say I see something on Instagram, I'm like, this is dumb. I might message my friend, be like, ah, oh, da, 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 this is stupid. I hate this, whatever. And then keep it moving. Other than that, I still don't care. People get mad at me for saying this, but I'm going to say it again. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about what the next person has going on. And it's crazy because even when I talk to people in the media field, they're like, you can't say that on air. That's so rude. I don't care. I don't care what y'all what y'all got going on. I really don't. A lot of people don't even care what I got going on. It's the truth. I don't know why we sitting here lying about stuff live on the radio. This is real live radio. And I'm going to tell you all how it is. 
I don't care. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't care about people. Doesn't mean I don't care about things happening in the world. I just don't care about the next person's business, period. And I said that live in Vegas, live in Chicago, and live on the web. I just don't. I don't care. I'm not invested in other people's lives. I have so much going on in my life as it is. <laughs> I don't got enough space to even care about the stuff I got going on. <laughs> I just don't. Let me know if y'all agree. Hey, shout out to my friend Gucci Rocks, who's live on the stream right now. It's a pleasure to have you here, man. Just to remind everybody, this is a live morning radio show. You can always call in at 702-221-7283. Again, the number to call in is 702-221-7283 if you want to get in on the conversation. Or if you want to comment live on air, I will acknowledge your comments. Now, you may be thinking, oh, snap. <laughs> Who done made Jimmy mad? <laughs> Listen, nobody. <laughs> This is all a prelude to me saying, if you have the ability, time, space, and money, you should go get a pet. <laughs> yes, I did all that to bring in a fun, light, and positive topic. I know. I know. A weird way to get into a topic that's supposed to be cute, fun, and positive. But I said all that because people feel really strong about pets. On one side of the spectrum, there are people who are obsessed with pets and they say that everyone should go have one and should go get one. And on the other side, there are people who say pets aren't for them and that they're disgusting. And my thought is, who cares what other people think? If you want to get a pet, go get one. If you don't, oh well. Like, look, it is what it is. I absolutely love animals. Some scare the living crap out of me. <laughs> and some I don't think y'all should be having as pets. I don't think y'all should be having snakes, spiders, lizards, lions, and all those other exotic animals as pets. <laughs> I just don't. But then there are other ones that I'm like, oh, they're just the cutest things. I love dogs, cats, ferrets, hamsters, bunnies, <laughs> and more. Things that are cute. Things that are not going to wake up and decide to eat you the next day. <laughs> like there are some things, animals you guys have as pets, where it's like, as long as you kept that pet fed, it's not going to eat you. But then also, too, depending on how that animal feels that day, it may actually eat you <laughs> or attack you. Like, mm-mm, mm-mm, <laughs> get somebody else to do it. Now, I would love to have a pet right now, but I truly don't have the time, space, or money for one. I think having a pet is like having a kid. And while I want three kids one day, that one day is not today. <laughs> it is absolutely not today. I'm expensive enough as it is. And when I'm free, I like to be outside living it up. I really don't have the mental and physical capacity to take care of something else right now. I have friends who can't even be outside as long as they want to because they have to go home and feed and take out their pets. And I love that for them. But that is not my ministry right now. <laughs> like, that is not my ministry, especially being waking up to do anything. I I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't like to be waking up. I, I just don't. I don't. I, I need my sleep. And it, it's funny to me that when I say that, I get mixed reactions. Some people are like, well, that makes sense. I understand. And there's others who are like, well, you're selfish. And I think that's weird that you don't want a pet right now, that you don't think that you have the space for a pet. Excuse me? <laughs> like, how are you going to call someone selfish for knowing themselves and being responsible enough to say, yeah, not right now. This isn't something I can do or want to do in this space right now. I, I'm sorry that I think that's responsible and I think that's very self-aware and that's a good thing. It ain't like I said, animals are trash and they don't deserve love and care. All I said was, I can't have one of my own right now. Like, geez. I hate when someone gets offended by the thought, by your thought process and what you have going on because they are secretly struggling with something or feel trapped by something. Nobody told you to get an animal that you couldn't take care of. Nobody told you to be upset with me because you feel like you have too much responsibility with your with your animal. That's your fault. That's that that's your struggle. <laughs> that's your ministry. But Jamie over here is going to do what he knows is best for him. Period. <laughs> that is what it is. People can have their own opinions, wants and needs, and that is a okay. That that's just that's just how I feel. Actually, Xavier. Hey, come here. Come here. My dog, don't want to listen to me. Now, y'all might like, maybe like, what, your dog? But look, <laughs> I can tell y'all that I will for sure want to have a pet of my own one time, you know, in my lifetime. But right now, it's not the time. The dog I had in high school that unfortunately ran away and never returned was great. 
I'm sad that it ran away. That really hurt my feelings. I was crying. I was sad. All this stuff. And it ran away my senior year right before I went to college. And that was an amazing dog. I had a Shiba Inu. His name was Shiloh. And the dog that my sister got and that has since been the family dog is enough for me. I love visiting other people's pets. I love pet sitting. And until it's time for me to get my own, I'm going to continue to do that. Now, hold on. Xavier. Come here, boy. My dog has okay first of all listen when i come back home so as y'all know i'm back home in chicago illinois and i'm visiting my parents and stuff like that until all my other stuff gets ready and my dog xavier i don't know what it is but this dog loves me it is so clingy it is so clingy and the, the crazy part is every time i come home my mom was like the dog's not gonna remember you the dog is always super super excited when i come home and it literally never wants to leave my side i don't know what it is I don't know if the dog loves me more than it loves Taylor. <laughs> That's my sister who actually got the dog. Or when my other sister who's always here with the dog, but this dog is obsessed with me. I go take a nap and I find the dog in the bed with me. Now, I don't know if y'all have this issue too, but I have extreme allergies. Extreme allergies. Y'all, I'm also trying to get this dog to come here. <laughs> and it's not coming here. This dog is always, always coming when I call his name. Xavier. Oh, he's asleep. Should I wake him up for y'all? Say here, wake your butt up and come over here so I can show the people how cute you are. Come here. <laughs> He's ignoring me. But anyway, I have allergies real bad. And even though this is a hyperallergenic dog, for some reason, it's fur is just, maybe it's because it's winter right now, but it's fur is getting everywhere, everywhere. And it is my eyes are freaking puffing up. I can't breathe. I'm coughing. I'm itchy. I don't know what's going on. So if y'all got any help, please help me. And for those who are in Chicago, if you know any spaces that are like natural remedy spots, please let me know. I need it. But all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. And we come back, we're going to have more conversations on should you own a pet. And during this break, I'm going to go get this dog. Because <laughs> he is so ignoring me. Xavier. Hey, Come on. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. This is the Jamie D Show live on KSHPA in Fort Country. And one oh three point one every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. PST in Las Vegas, Nevada. And now 12 p.m. until 1 p.m. CST in Chicago, Illinois. Don't go nowhere. I'll be right back with my dog. <laughs> Is your dog suffering from a sensitive stomach? Hi, it's Kelly the Cookie Lady from Mooch's Munchies. Our dogs had super sensitive tummies and I needed to find a low fat treat that wouldn't give them gas or other issues. Most of the treats on the market were loaded with fillers, chemicals, and chicken fat. Many of them weren't even food. Well, I knew I could do better, so I developed Mooch's Munchies and I'm happy to be able to share them with you. Stop by our store or our website, moochesmunchies.com and find out why we say that Mooch's Munchies are totally possum. Zen World Premium CBD offers full and broad spectrum CBD oil, extracts, and capsules, which are designed to help you feel your best. Their products are sourced from the best organic hemp and natural ingredients on the market and are tested for quality, purity, and potency. They have a full range of items from health and wellness to beauty to pets. Call 725-205-9223. Visit online at zenworld.com or stop by their location at 9895 South Maryland Parkway and Silverado Ranch Parkway. Mention KSHP for 10% off in-store or use code KSHP online for 15% off. Hungry for the best barbecue in Las Vegas? Come out to the infamous barbecue and meat market, John Moles Meats and Roadkill Grill in Las Vegas. John Moles was featured on the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Now take home delicious meat selections for your grill, and while you're there, grab a bite of the best barbecue in Las Vegas. With two locations now at Tom and Gowan or on North Decatur, you're sure to find the perfect meats for your next barbecue or party. Find us online at johnmolemeats.com. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Jamie D Show. Woo! All right, y'all. <laughs> Look at the dog. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi. Okay, everybody. This is the family dog. His name is Xavier. He's a Maltese. What's up? What's up? Say hi to everybody. <laughs> y'all, he is so cute. He was asleep. 
I have to pull him up out of sleep for him to say hi to y'all because, yeah, he didn't want to move. This dog is so cuddly and so cute and so nice and so friendly, but also super sleepy and super lazy. All right, I'm putting you down. <laughs> Thank you for making an impromptu pop up, Xavier. Look, going right back to sleep. <laughs> but yes, okay, I brought that up. I brought Xavier up and brought him into the picture because I want to show you guys. I love animals. I love pets. I'm over here pet sitting the family dog right now. I, look, now he want to come say hi again. You want to say hi again? I love pets. Oh, I love animals. Look at him. Look at him. I love dogs. I do. I just don't have time for something like you right now because I got stuff to do and I got bills to pay and you're expensive. And he also pooped on the floor today because my mama didn't take him out before she went to work. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> let's get back into the topic of should you own your own pet? Now, I believe everybody should get a pet if they could, if they have the time, because there are so many beautiful and positive benefits to owning a pet. I want you all to take a listen to what Nicole Roberts over at Health and Human Rights Strategies on YouTube had to say about why pets are good for your health. Take a listen. It's officially National Pet Week. We know that the bond between pets and their owners is strong, but there are also many health benefits to owning a pet. According to the CDC, owning an animal can increase opportunities for exercise, getting outside and socializing. Regular walking or playing with pets can also decrease blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and triglyceride levels, which prevent things like heart attack and stroke. Pets can also help manage loneliness and depression by giving us companionship. For all those reasons, I keep fully around. Hello, and welcome back to Health and Human Rights Strategies YouTube channel. I'm Nicole Fisher, the founder and president of HHR. Because it's National Pet Week, we wanted to take some time and talk about the benefits of owning a pet of which there are many. And that's great news, given that most households in the United States, an estimated 68%, have at least one pet. Here are eight ways having a pet can improve your health. Number one, exercise. Whether it's frequent trips outdoors or long runs and walks with your animal, moving with a pet is associated with increased physical activity. And it's free, which you can't say it's for gyms. Number two, lower stress and anxiety. Whether it's comfort, cuddles, laughter, or physical activity, having a pet leads to a release in calming endorphins, like oxytocin. It could also be something as simple as a sense of calm brought from watching a fish swim. Interestingly, in the early 2000s, researchers found that between friends, spouses, and pets, People were less stressed when conducting difficult tasks, having a pet around, than a friend or a spouse. Three, lower blood pressure and cholesterol. Having a pet has the potential to lower your blood pressure, especially for hypertensive or high-risk patients. Did you know you're 30% less likely to have a heart attack and 40% less likely to have a cardiovascular incident if you own a cat? Four, improve discipline. A recent study showed that caring for fish helps teenagers with diabetes track their disease. It's about routine and responsibility, which are essential for maintaining health. Five, increased happiness and decreased depression. Pets offer unconditional love, but they also give their owners a sense of purpose and combat feelings of loneliness by providing companionship. This is especially true amongst the elderly and the sick. Many military facilities use dogs to help soldiers deal with post-traumatic stress after finding that those who have a pet are more responsible and they have someone who cares about them, which improves their treatment. Number six, improve socialization. Whether it's interacting with people outside or engaging in a conversation about your pet, having an animal is a great way to socialize with others. Do you know there are even social platforms and dating sites now tailored to the pets you have? Seven, improved immunity and prevention of allergies. Research shows that having a dog in infancy can improve a child's overall immune system as well as reduce allergies. In fact, 
It was found that having a pet in a home can reduce a child's likelihood of developing allergies related to their home by 33%. Eight, childhood development. Emotional development in children is vitally important to becoming a healthy adult, and pets are hugely beneficial to children, especially those who suffer from things like autism or ADHD. A child with ADHD cares for a pet, and that encourages them to focus on responsibilities and have a predictable routine, while children who have autism find that the sensory experience of holding and petting an animal can be soothing and calm their emotional state. So no matter what your reason is, it could be as simple as love. Ugh. But we highly encourage you to get a pet. Say bye, bully. So the, I personally loved that video. It was so cute. Her voice was so calming, but she mentioned a lot of great facts. I don't know about the allergy part because I'm already itchy. <laughs> and the dog is hyperallergenic. I don't know what's going on. And like, literally, I'm like really itchy. But <laughs> Gina Chandler says, I have grand dogs, Inca and Murphy. She's right. They make me so happy. And I'm glad that you guys are actually able to listen to these audios sometimes when I, and enjoy them. Because sometimes when I find these audios, I'm like, let me not find an audio that is like, I'm pulling out the TV in school, and now everyone's going to go to sleep. <laughs> and just like SilverFox6215 on Instagram said, no lie, they are more loyal than people. If you don't trust people, your animal is by your side through the good and the bad. SilverFox6215 Silver Fox on Instagram also said, you have a bad day and you come home from work or even a breakup and you're down, watch how your pet puts that spark back into your life. That's awesome. I love that. And I agree. I love dogs. I love animals. Like I said, I just don't have the time for them right now. I don't. I don't. Like I said, waking up to Xavier pooping on the ground because my mama decided to not take him out this morning. It's like, oh, you pooped on the ground. Now I got to clean this up. Ew. <laughs> and what if I was running late for work? That poop was going to have to sit there until I got back. And that's gross. See, that's just, yeah. I don't have time. I don't have time. I just don't. Please don't shoot the messenger. I love dogs. I showed y'all Xavier, and I can't bring him back on because he's back in his cage, and he's asleep. But I get, again, I completely agree with what Nicole had to say. And this is why I can't wait to have the time, space, and money to have my own dog one day. I think animals and pets are just absolutely amazing. Now, I want you all to listen to what Pursuit of Wonder had to say on YouTube about what pets teach us about life. And let's discuss if you agree and if you think you or other people should get a pet. Take a listen. Looking back and thinking about it, it is kind of odd that as the human species, we take possession of other types of species and call them our pets. And it is even odder that it is accepted as normal across essentially all of humanity. We take animals that cannot communicate with us on any real coherent level, bring them into our homes, call them our pets, and live with them. We feed them, shelter them, and take care of them. And generally, all we ask in return is that we just get to be around them. But why is this? What is so appealing about sharing our life with another species? Outside of more practical reasons like assisting in hunting, gathering, and general tasks, one reason for assimilating pets is the human desire to have responsibility and control. The need to feel important and the need to feel like something is dependent on us. This feeling is empowering and as humans our central insecurities are partly satiated by the sense of superiority we experience when owning and domesticating another living being. On the surface, this might sound somewhat feeble and selfish of us humans. But the truth is, although this may be a motive, there is a much deeper and more sincere reason why we like owning and being around our pets. A reason that makes the relationship between human and animal companion a truly mutual, interdependent and beautiful one that reveals a wonderful side of our nature. We do not simply own our pets, we love them. We become best friends with them and form bonds that are truly reciprocal and unconditional. 
we give them access to consistent safety, health, comfort and other logistical things that they might struggle to sustain. And in return, they help remind us of a side of ourselves that we want so deeply to live in, but often struggle with. The appreciation for simplicity, the ability to feel free, the obsession with fun, the lack of sensitivity to embarrassment, the disinterest in holding grudges, and the unrestrained affection that our pets possess are all of the things that we long for and wish we could feel constantly in ourselves, but often struggle to do so. And our pets embody and remind us of the importance and possibility of these things. I would argue that the elements of our nature that our pets lack, like complex language, logical understanding, heightened self-awareness, etc., are all equally beautiful and essential to what makes the human experience so uniquely wonderful. But I would also argue that it can be very easy to become lost in this part of ourselves, the part that needs to understand and control everything. And our animal companions help show us that we don't always need to. That life can sometimes be best enjoyed by simply enjoying it for what it is, feeling it, playing in it, rolling in its grass. And so perhaps, at the end of the day, even though we may like to think that our pets depend on us, it may be more so the other way round. I agree. I agree. Thank you for watching. I mean, if you found enjoyment and... We can turn that off. Yeah, we, we think that our pets really depend on us. And sometimes we depend on our pets. We really do. Pets are beautiful. And just like Gina, Gina Chandler says, pets rock. I was trying to get Xavier to come back here and say bye to y'all, but this dog went back to sleep and he's ignoring me. Let me tell you, I'm telling you, if I call this man, I just say X and he's already on the way. He just, he wanted to do something live on the radio right now, but I'm, I'm appreciative that when I am live on the radio, he does leave me alone. <laughs> All right, guys, this has been the Jamie D Show live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST in Las Vegas, Nevada, and now live from 12 p.m. until 1 p.m. CST in Chicago, Illinois. Hey, we're also live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at the Jamie D Show. If you want to promote your business, products, services, music, or music or more live on the radio, hit us up at info at jamied.com. That's I-N-F-O at J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E dot -E -E com. Info at jamied.com. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Love y'all. Peace out. What's up, everybody? You were just tuned into the Jamie D Show, live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. If you aren't in the Las Vegas area, you can catch my show live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at the Jamie D Show. That's T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. If you want to advertise your business on my show, email us at info at jamied.com. Thank you all so much for your support. See you tomorrow. Thank you.